Our session today will be about statistics. So we'll go through basic um, statistics and how to calculate the mean, standard deviation, the mod, and I also request you to try some of the questions. All right, so to start with, when you're dealing with statistics, we're dealing with data that is either grouped or ungrouped. So we have what we call grouped data and we have what we call ungrouped data. So data that is ungrouped can be two, four, three, five, seven, um, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe two. So this is called ungrouped data. So I want to teach you what is called ungrouped data descriptive statistics. So the first thing you need to do whenever you're given data that is scattered like this, we need to rearrange it in order. So let's start with the smallest piece of data. We have two, we have another two, we have what, three, we have four, we have five, we have seven, and we have nine. So this is ungrouped data. And how many data sets do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our n is equal to seven. So for this data set that we have, we're going to look at what we call measures of central tendency and dispersion. So we'll start with the basic uh, measures. So we'll look at um what is called the range. The range. Range is simply the highest value minus what? The lowest value. What is our highest value and what is our lowest value in, in this data set? Lowest two, highest nine. Okay, so nine minus two, we get seven. So our range is seven. Then the mode is simply the number that appears the most there. So which number appears the most there? Two. So two is our mode in this case. So our mode is two. If we had two twos and maybe two fives, it would be a bimodal frequency, which is to call them as our mode. All right, together. Then we go to what is called our quartiles. So we have three quartiles. We have the first quarter, the second quarter, and the third quarter. So a quarter is simply a quarter. If you're dealing with quarter one, it is simply one over four. And if we're dealing with the second quarter, it's one over four. Um, second quarter is like the median, so it would be two over four, which is the same as half. And then if you are looking at the third quarter, it will be three over four uh, times n. So our n was seven, right? So in this case, yes. we are going to find the quarter of seven. What is the quarter of seven? Use your calculator. Three point five. So three point five. Are you sure? A quarter of seven is what? Is it one point something? So in short, it's seven over four. What is seven over four? One point seven five. One point seven five. Okay, so you round up. So what is the nearest whole number? 
the second position. So you go here. Which one is our second position? One, two. So this is called our quartile number one. So this just shows you the position. You always round up regardless of the figure you're getting there. So here we have half of what? Seven. Half of seven is what? 3.5. So when you round up here, we're going to get the fourth position. So here, our second position, which is our Q1, we found as what? Two. Then here we found 3.5. 3.5, we round up. Whether we found 3.1, we always round up for using this formula. And the other formulas where they put plus one, there you get the nearest. But here we are rounding up. So 3.5 to the nearest is the fourth number. So let's go to the fourth number here. We count one, two, three, four. Coincidentally, it's a four. Not that it will always be four. So the fourth position here is what? Four. So our oh. second quarter we've gotten is a four. So second quarter is also the same as what? The median. So Q2 is four, which is our median. Then we go to our three quarters of seven. What is three quarters of seven? So it is three times seven divided by uh, four. What do we get? Five point two five. Five point two five. So we round up whether it's five point one. So the nearest is the sixth position. Mm -hmm. So sixth one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our Q3. So sixth position here, we get seven. So mm -hmm. this is called our third quartile. So Q1 is called what? First quartile. Q2, second quarter. Q3, third quarter. Then the difference between the third quarter. And the first quarter is called the interquartile range. So Q3 minus Q1, 7 minus what? 2. What do we get? We get a 5. That is called our interquartile range. So Q2 minus Q3. Q3 minus Q1 is called the interquartile range. It's a range of the quartiles. Okay. The difference between the highest and the smallest is called our interquartile range. Now, the data that we have here, we can also calculate other measures of central tendency called the mean, the standard deviation, and the variance. All right, so let me use another set of data. Suppose we have the values of x, which is what? Two, four, six, and eight. So you square these figures here. Two squared, we have a four. Four squared, we have a 16. Six squared, we have 36. And eight squared, we have 64. The total of this side is called the sum of x. The total of this side is sum of x squared. So let's total up here. So we have 10, 20. And you have 100 and 120. N, how many figures are there? One, two, three, four. Our N is four. Are we together so far? Yes. So to find the mean, the symbol for mean is what? X bar. So summation of X over N. So our x, summation of x is 20, our n is what? 4. What do we get? 5. 5, correct. So that is called up 5. The variance is given by 
a symbol which looks like this, S squared. So it's a summation of X bar two, That's summation of X over N, everything over N minus one. So here we have 120 minus 20 squared over n, which is 4, and everything over 4 minus 1. OK, so you need to start from this breakdown. You break this one down. 20 squared over 4, what do we get? We got 100, right? So 120 minus 100 divided by what? 3. So what we get? 20 over 3. So what is our variance? 6.67. Good, 6.67. So to find our standard deviation, we square root the variance. So square root of 6.67, what do we get? 6.67. Do you know where the square root is on the calculator? Two point five eight. Two point five eight, correct. We also have another variable which we call the coefficient of variation, CV. It is simply found by dividing the standard deviation over the mean. We multiply by hundred. So you found two point five seven, and what was our mean? The mean was 20 over 4, which was 5 times 100. So the percentage, what are you getting? 51.4. Okay, 51.4. So... That is a percentage. Right, so now we go to what we call our grouped data. The group data now is the data that we have, which is classified into groupings. So we may have data that is put into classes. For instance, we have a class with it. We have one to five. We have 10, we have 15, we have 20. So we have six, 11, and what? 16. So the frequencies here, we could have four, six, eight, and two. So what you do here, firstly, is to put this into uh, the cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency mean, meaning add-on. So you put a four there, four plus six, 10. 10 plus eight, 18. 18 plus two, 20. I repeat, when you're given these frequencies, you start with this figure there, you add to six, six, you get 10. 10 plus eight, 18. 18 plus two, 20. This is what we call our N. Our N is 20. Are right, together? Yes. Then we get our midpoint. 
the, the midpoint is simply found by the lower bound and the upper bound the other exam. So we add one to five, we get six divided by two, which is three. Six plus 10, 16 divided by two, we get what? Eight. 11 plus um, 15, 26 divided by two, we get 13. Now you notice that there's a difference of five there. Just keep adding a five if you want. Eight plus five, 18. 13 plus five, 18. It's going to tally with what you're doing. So if you're going to add 16 plus uh, 20, we're going to have 36. 36 divided by two is 18. So this is what we call the class we did. All right, together. Yes. And here we're squaring now. Three squared, nine. Six, eight, eight squared, 64. 13 squared, 169. 169. 18 squared, 324. 324, correct. And now we calculate the frequency times the value of x. So frequency times value of x is 12. And frequency times value of x squared. So four times nine, 36. We go back here. Fx six times eight, we get 48. And again, six times 64, we get 380 what? 84. People make a mistake of squaring these to get that, no, no, no. It is f times x and f times x squared. So you're starting with f. So six times eight, we got 48. Again, before we got that. So here would be eight times what? Eight times 13 to get one zero. Just go. Then again, eight times what? One sixty nine. All right, so it's simply this column times that, this column times that. So you'll get 13, 52. So tell me here, how do we get the answer here? What are we multiplying? Two times uh, 18. All right, which is 36, then? Get here. Oh. Are you multiplying? Two times what? Three times six. Yes, yeah. eighteen. We got thirty-six. Then now two times three twenty-four. We get what? Thirty-eight. Then we now square. We now add just these last two columns. This is frequency of x and frequency of x squared. So we're going to total here 12 plus 48 plus 104 plus 30. So here we're going to get 200. So we go 36 plus 384 plus 1352 plus 648, we're going to have what? 24.20. So the mean for group data now changes. Remember, our initial formula was summation of x over n. But here, since it's grouped in classes, we're simply going to use an f back at the upper. So summation of fx over n. So our fx is 200, our n is 20. So here we're going to get what? 10. And the variance, summation of fx squared minus summation of fx to the power two over n, everything over n minus one. So what is fx squared? 24. What is uh, fx? 
it's 200 but to the power two. So you need to distinguish this figure and that figure. This one is a big figure, 2420. Then this one is a smaller figure, the 200 over 20. Okay, everything over 20 minus one. So this is called the variance. So let's start 200 divided by 20. 200 squared divided by 20 is not from here. You need to be careful on how to apply this part. So what do we get here? 200. It is 2,000, right? Correct. So are you sure 200 squared divided by 20? This is 2,000, yes. So 2,000 minus 2420. 2420 minus 2000, what do we get? 420, right? 120. And divided by 19, this side. So what do we get? Um, 1.6. Again, 420 divided by 19. 420 divided by 19. Mm -hmm. Hey, 12.63. 12.63, yes. That is called our what? Our variance. So how do we get the standard deviation? We square root the variance, but always that's what we do. So square root of 12.63, what do we get? Three point five five. Three point five five. All right. So here, what is the class we did? From here to here to here to here, that is five, right? Our class we did or height is five. Now sometimes we'll be given information that is not classified. It's in groups. It's a lot. For instance, I'll give you. Um, numbers like zero three zero four. Um, zero nine, eighteen, eighteen, fifteen, nineteen. 19, 20, 22, 23, 23, 24, 25, 33, 34, 39, 39, 41, 43. They ask you to group this in a groups of 10. Okay? Put them in groups of 10. So you can say 0 to 9, 10 to 20, oh, so 10 to 19, sorry. So you need to know the class width. How many are these ones? From zero to nine, how many numbers are there? There are ten. So for you to be careful, you need to ensure that this number from zero goes to ten. This is the class width of ten. So here from nineteen, we start where? Twenty-two, twenty-nine. You need to look at the highest number there. It's actually forty. So thirty-two, thirty-nine. And we have 40 to 49. So how many are they from 0 to, to 9? So this is our class, our class. So how many are they from 0 to 9? 1, 2, 3. So they are 3, right? 
from 10 to 19. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five. So there are five there. About from 20 to 29. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we have six. Then about from 30 to 39, how many are they? One, two, three, four. There are four. About from 40 to 49, how many are they? One, two. Okay. Sometimes they may not be arranged very well. They could be scattered, but you need to be careful. All right. So this is a class width of what? The class width of 10. Because this is moving. How many numbers are there? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 9. There are 10. 10, 11, 12, 14, up to 19, there are 10. So you need to understand how to compute the class width. If they use the class width of 5, you would say 3 to what? You add um, 3 to, you add a 4 instead of the 5 itself. 3 to 7. So there are numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then here, we start 8 to what? 12. Here, 13 to what? 17. This is a class width of 5 because from here to here it's 5. From here to here it's 5. You need to be very careful when you're calculating the class width. Did you get me right there? Yes. So, I and I are from 0 to 9. The class width is... 10, okay. you could just add a plus one if you want in your mind. From 10, so it's a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There are actually 10 numbers in there, inclusive of the 10. All right? Then how do you find the yes. cumulative frequency? I said you start with that three, you add to the five, you get eight. You add to this, we get what? 14. We add to the four, we get what? Eight, uh, 18. We add. Uh, to the uh, three, we get one and one. Correct. So this is our end, which is 21. All right, together. Now define the value of X. We add the lowest and the biggest number. So zero plus nine divided by two. 4.5, okay, then 10 plus 19 is 29, divided by 2, 14.5. So since the class width is 10, if you want, don't want to think so much, let's add a 10 throughout. So 4 plus 10, 14.5, 14.5 plus 10, and 4.5, 24.5 plus 10, get 4.5, 24.5 plus 10, 24.5, all right? Then what next do you do? You square this, all right? You get the values. Then yes. what next do you do? You find the f of x and f of x squared. All together? Yes. Then you need to find the mean and the standard deviation for the group frequency. So I don't want to confuse you. Exactly what I've mentioned in here is how I want you to do this. The following marks were obtained by 50 laboratory technologists given a test. So we have 25, except they are jumbled 52. And these are marks out of 60. So we are being asked to prepare what frequency distribution table with a class width of five. Okay. The first having a lower limit of 20. So I've given you already spoon feeding. So the first lower limit is what? 20. So I've given you a trick part. If I've given you a lower limit of 20, so your shortcut will be to do this. That's right. Uh, uh, 20. All right. So meaning here, 12 quarter 25, 35. You need to identify the highest number in here. The highest number should be the test was out of 60. So which one is the highest number? Is it 52? Or is there a number more than 52? All right, so here that five, then we go to what? From that five, 40, mm -hmm. 45, 50, 
355. Then here you go to from 20 to what? 24. It's to shouldn't touch that one. From 24 to what? 24 to? You're adding a 4, 29. So I, I missed out a number there, 30. From 24, 29. So I'm just giving you a hint of what you're supposed to do to find the frequencies. Are we together? to 34, 35 to 39, 30, 40 to 44. I'm just giving you a guide of what you should do for this question. So we need to group these ones. Then manually count which numbers are between 20 and 24. You will start counting. So they are jumbled. So you need to look at numbers that are starting from 20 to 24. You check in there. There's 22, which is one. You can be crisscrossing. Uh, you check there to 24, 1, here there's nothing, here there's nothing, here there's nothing, here there's nothing, so there's 1, so you put in the frequency 1. Then you go 25 to 29, you start checking again, 1, then you go here, 2, 3, you go here, nothing, nothing. There's nothing, so three, you put three. So it's tedious, but the mark allocation is very good. You are going to get 11 marks out of that. Okay? Then they'll ask you to find the mean. I've told you how to find the mean. Find the standard deviation. So you cannot find the standard deviation before finding the what? The variance. Is that clear? Are we together? Yes. That is your homework question number 6A. So I've taught you this is under grouped data. So you need to, um, to do exactly what I have done so that we, we move on the same page. All right, so let me go to indices. Please do my homework. We'll go to indices.